I want to talk to you tonight about the end gap on your rings. And what that means is your rings look like this on your piston. Of course, here's your piston. And right here at the end, and we can't get as close as we normally do with our Amsoil B camera, but right here, there's a gap. And what that gap should be, and if Jordan is going to the next slide, you'll see it, sometimes it tightens up. The bore of the cylinder will make the ring pinch and it'll get together. What you want to avoid is of course, having the ends of that ring actually touch each other. There should be a gap there called an E-gap or an N-gap on your ring. If you look in the next slide, you'll see a picture of someone using a feeler gauge, very, very similar to this right here. And what he's doing is he's putting that ring down inside the cylinder, down to where the pistons are hitting the wall through the stroke, not all the way at the top, not all the way at the bottom, but just down far enough. And he's putting that feeler gauge in there to make sure he's got the proper end gap in the ring. The proper end gap should be four thousandths per inch of bore that you have. We'll get into that in just a minute. In the next slide, you'll see a little machine. It's got a little hand crank thing. And what you could do, they sell this, it's very inexpensive. You can put the ring in there and it's got a little grinding wheel, a little disc that will hit both sides of that ring as you crank it around. You could also do it as Jordan probably, or hopefully is going to the next slide. You could also do it with a very, very fine file. A very fine file, you can do it through the ring, okay? The thing you wanna be careful of um, is if there's a, uh, a, a bevel or, or an angle on the ring, when you're, sent, when you're filing it, you wanna make sure you file it the same way that, that angle is going. Now, a rule of thumb, and it's, it's more than a rule of thumb. If you have uh, uh, the bore in your bike, let's say it's uh, 72 millimeter, 72 millimeter is about three inches. So you wanna go four thousandths per inch on the clearance of the gap. So if you have a uh, 72 millimeter bore in your bike, that's approximately three inches. You wanna go four thousandths per inch. So you wanna make sure that you have a clearance in between here of 12 thousandths. If that happens to be the size of your bike, if it's 72 millimeters, it might be 56 millimeter. It could be much smaller if you have a 50 cc bike, but whatever it is, you wanna use a feeler gauge like this. And this one I happen to actually have set at 12, uh, I'm sorry, at, uh, yeah, 12, 12 thousandths. It's four thousandths per inch. It was a 72 millimeter bore, three inches approximately. So 12 thousandths, you wanna make sure you do that. Next time you put a top end in your bike. And believe me, it's, it's, it's negligible how much, if, if you take off an extra thousandth or two thousandths, you're not gonna lose any amount of compression that's gonna be noticeable. What is noticeable is if you have those two points of that ring touching each other, when the piston and the rings expand, that's how you wind up with a seizure on your bike or doing damage to your cylinder. That's what you might wanna try next time.